I will be as devoted to him as Penelope was to her Ulysses. Words inspiring, or would be if they weren't so unbelievable, the unbelievable meaning here sounds untrustworthy. I had my doubts because these were my ex-wife's handwritten words almost a year after our divorce due to her infidelity becoming final. Those words were written on the invitation to her upcoming wedding. She was moving fast, like the German army in 1940 cutting through the Ardennes on its way to the English Channel, but I was just thinking about the impending Soviet juggernaut on her flank. That's probably because I was watching World at War while reading the mail. Lawrence Olivier did well. Truth be told, I moved on. I dated a bit and found a woman with long-term potential, but that invitation bullshit was inciting me. Is that why the bitch sent it? She knew I liked the classics, so it was a spur-of-the-moment thing. And I have a temper. She knew that, too. It was like a challenge. When I found her asleep in my bed, I stopped long enough to take a few quick shots before they saw me, and then I kicked my lover in the balls a couple times. As my wife screamed and tried to hold me down, her lover rolling and puking all over the floor, I regret to say that in my passion I turned around and kicked her, twice. I didn't think I hit the first time. I like to do my job right. I then told them that they should thank me for my restraint, and that if I even saw a police car passing me anytime soon, I would immediately find them, and, with the help of doctors Smith and Wesson, perform minor brain surgery on both of them right outside. Thankfully, this vigorous exercise has cleansed my soul, and it's as unpleasant as I got in a divorce in which everything was divided equally, with no alimony, thanks to the photos. Our state was partly to blame for the divorce. I let the guy's wife know, of course, but not because I was angry. Like I said, I'm doing my job right. None of this stopped her from campaigning to get me back. She was sorry, she wanted to talk, she wanted counseling, she got her friends and family to call, she sent cards and letters, everything, files, time, but it didn't make sense. She was clearly unhappy with me. Why couldn't she move on? I didn't know and I didn't care. A few months ago, she finally gave up. Now, I knew why. The simplest internet search led me to a wedding website and allowed me to determine the happy future of a cuckold. Penelope my ass. There is no way she would chastely wait 20 years for her Ulysses to return. I was only gone for a weekend. I'd give that marriage about two years until she was lying on her back counting ceiling tiles in some motel. Fortunately, the new guy's work email address was easy to find, as well as his phone number. I wrote him an email, attaching copies of my divorce complaint and the decree, both of which had the lover's name and also stated the reason for the adultery. I added photos from that fateful day and sent a congratulatory note suggesting a prenuptial agreement. It was a day later when my ex's new beau emailed back. Why are you doing this? I decided I'd just call. Guys are supposed to help each other, I said. He grinned. He seemed nice. No, seriously, why? I had no reason to be mad at him, so I wasn't lying. My ex-bitch, who is now your lovely fiancé, sent me an invitation to your beautiful wedding. She enclosed a note about how loving and faithful she would be to you. This annoyed me in a past life as well, but she keeps trying to get into my soul again. And I don't believe her. But maybe that's your problem now. I have no idea what she told you about how we broke up, but just in case, I can hurt her a little and maybe save you some grief. I thought I'd pass on my thoughts and maybe give you a chance. Thank you, was all he said. A few weeks later, I got a voicemail from my ex. Bastard! She yelled, nothing more. It seems that the Wehrmacht stopped at Stalingrad. Later I learned that the wedding had been canceled. What a pity.